Thanks for joining the Lily channel. I am Lily and I am super excited to have the chance to be interviewing a dear friend of ours in the family who is a prize winning author from the Minnesota Independent Publishers Association. Oh my god, MIPA. MIPA. Wow, we are joined here by Dr. Stuart Hansen. And first of all, I appreciate your service to our country. Oh, thank I mean, you. Huge. It's it, with the Navy, right? That's right. That's Medi a long time ago. Medical officer. I was a physician for a squadron of uh, medical uh, uh, landing ships in Vietnam. And then I was in the evacuation hospital in Yokosuka, Japan for two years after a year of sea duty. Wow. I, I have a soft spot for veterans. My dad was a veteran as well, so it doesn't have to be a veteran's day to acknowledge them. As it is, we grew up in the uh, an alley across from the Hansons, and this is just a super fun moment for me to be acknowledging a local business owner, and I consider business owner as far as having written books. Since you're an award winner, tell them about the award. Well, the Minnesota, the Midwest uh, Independent Publishers Association uh, has a uh, award sy system that is for 13 states. So thir authors from 13 states that are independent publishers can uh, put their books in. So you, you send in a bunch of bunch of your books. And they uh, send it out to reviewers, and the reviewers uh, come back and give you scores. And one of the reviewers for the, for my book gave me a 10 all the way across in seven different categories. Others had 10, nine, and eight, uh, but wow. uh, uh, of the other three, but one had 10 all the way across. And it was uh, very rewarding to see that as somebody who uh, r reviews books could uh, really be enthusiastic about a book they're reviewing. And, yeah. that, and that's what that's what this is about. So uh, we won the uh, gold uh, award uh, as a finalist and won the uh, gold award uh, in the area of health. So they had a health health area. They had other areas in nonfiction and fiction and children's books and so forth. So there's about 25 different uh, categories, including book design and uh, and so forth. I didn't enter anything other than the health. Uh, and uh, we won. At, at a <laughs> so it's, you're probably dying to know what the book is, if I haven't already mentioned it. Why don't you uh, do the honors? Well, it's a senior's guide for living well and dying well. And it's a, a compilation of uh, programs that we had at a senior building uh, in Minneapolis called uh, Park Shore. Uh, and the committee uh, had a program once a month for several years on living well and dying well. How to, how to uh, create your legacy uh, was the third, uh, third issue. So the, the book uh, came out of that. And we were having programs from uh, 2017 uh, through 2020. And then March of 2020 came and everybody stopped. And we could, nav could not have any more mm. um, programs. So we... Uh, decided that uh, we'd write the book. Well, since I had written another book, uh, they all looked to me, and so I wound up being the author. The uh, illustrator is another member of our group, uh, Carolyn uh, Papke, uh, who uh, lives here in the same building that I live in. And uh, we published this book then uh, in uh, 2022. So it, it took about, after we decided to do the book, it took about two years to... Uh, Get it, get it all in, in publication and printed. Want to? Do you have a, spe a favorite section of it? Well, uh, I like the uh, section on legacy, mm. but it's it's designed to um, have the three major parts to it. The first part is uh, living well. How do you age well? How do it seem? You know, as you uh, think about retirement, or as you enter retirement, or into retirement, how do you age well? Uh, by you know, nutrition, exercise, but also mental activity. And what are the things? So the, the, the uh, subjects uh, include uh, uh, you know, get, keeping healthy but, uh, and also engaging in your community. But, but then there's a section on driving and when to stop driving. Uh, there's a section on sleeping, 
when to stop sleeping, I mean, when to start sleeping. I mean, the sections uh, are practical. Uh, falling was another, another uh, important subject. Seniors uh, tend to uh, injure themselves significantly when they fall. Yeah, <laughs> I did not realize that one of the reasons that uh, seniors trip a lot, actually my dad mentioned this there, by the way, they were also colleagues at Park Nicollet in different departments. Uh, Dr. Hansen's a retired pulmonologist, correct? That's right. Yeah. yeah, so I probably didn't mention that. That's what gives you street cred for writing about health care, that you actually provided health care for decades. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I, I spent uh, 49 years practicing medicine, uh, and uh, I wound up in doing pulmonary medicine, which included ventilators. And then it, uh, the ventilators became the central point of life support. So when uh, we got more and more technical about keeping people alive and getting people through the uh, injuries or, or inju diseases, uh, we became the uh, critical care specialist. So I say I did pulmonary medicine and critical care. Yeah. And, and in critical care, we had a lot of conversations about end of life, end of life planning or, or uh, the situation, or what's the, what can we do med medically and what can't we do, what are we doing too much uh, which is a big question, and, yeah. and how to decide uh, when uh, you have overstepped the capacity of the medical system and, and just pretend, uh, perpetuating these in suffering of people who are critically ill. So I had a lot of conversations with families, uh, and, uh, and then in the office, we took care of a lot of people with chronic diseases, particularly chronic lung disease. Uh, we call it COPD, chronic obstructive yeah. pulmonary disease. And uh, these people are carrying oxygen around. You might see them in the community. Sometimes our objective was to get them out into the community, but they needed supplemental oxygen from the air we breathe. They had to have something more oxygen than, than uh, we, we get just from the uh, atmosphere. And so I had conversations in the office on one-to-one -one with patients, mm -hmm. and then I had conversations with, that were uh, with families. Uh, and so I figured that I had about 4,000 conversations about end-of-life planning wow. in the uh, period of time that I practiced. So you knew there was a need for the book. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's how I, that's how I got on this, uh, we call it a guide group, but it's basically a committee. Uh, in our senior building, uh, and you know the the areas of uh, aging well included uh, how to deal with depression, or a chapter called Feeling Blue, and another one called Recognizing Fraud, mm -hmm. and and that <coughs> had um, a lot of interest. Uh, and then the last part of the book, the third section, is uh, our our legacies, how to create your legacy. So. Living well, how to die well or de deal with the healthcare system, and then after you're gone, what's your legacy? How do you create that? How do you build a, um, besides your, your bank accounts and besides your property, what else do you want to leave? Do you want to leave uh, your family and friends know what your values were, what you want to ex uh, have uh, re remembered? Uh, you want to be remembered by, uh, and also uh, estate planning, uh, planning your own funeral. Somebody, some people you know, write their own uh, obituaries. Uh, and, and then the important thing uh, about your legacy is while you're living to have conversations with your family about uh, what are your wishes and what you want to leave uh, so that they know what, what your thinking was uh, while you were making these plans. And then uh, how to hold those uh, conversations with your family, and then how to organize your paper, uh, cha whole chapter on organizing your, your papers and your uh, passwords and all the way so down, easy. all the way down to your, you know, wills and, and uh, uh, legacy uh, that you want to leave. So the, the idea here is to be pretty comprehensive, but also the chapters are short, yeah. uh, quick, uh, quick reads, uh, and uh, it's not a book that you pick up and read in two nights. You, you may do that, 
but you, if you follow the guide mm -hmm. uh, as, a, as a true guide, you might take one subject a week or one yeah. a month uh, and say, now I'm going to work on wills and estate planning, and then I'm going to work on uh, decision-making on, on uh, how I want to be treated by the healthcare system. And that isn't something you do in the one hour. No. Uh, or you need to take some time and maybe even days, weeks, and even years to make decisions. Yeah. And I th people say, who's the target audience for this? And I say, everybody over 30. Yeah. Uh, because pe when you're over 30, you start having parents that are 50, 60, and 70, and they're starting to have physical and mental issues uh, and uh, starting to think about, for them, uh, how they want to be treated and, and encouraging them. And then anybody who's 50 or 60 or 70 uh, has to be thinking about where do I want to live? Uh, what do, when do I want to retire? When, where should I uh, um, put my time and effort in uh, after I'm uh, no longer in the workforce? Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I'm starting to see doctors more often than I ever had before. Uh, how do I want to approach this yeah. healthcare system that can do remarkable things, except remarkable things can also cause suffering or pain or time constraints uh, on your time as a patient. So uh, it's, I think, important to think ahead uh, and uh, be uh, proactive uh, and be intentional about uh, uh, living and be intentional about dying and uh, be intentional about your le legacy. I love it. And the one part that I really one part that I really liked about the book was you, you were mentioning how it's important for people to know about your values and how hard it can be if a person has left no indication of it. Maybe they isolated themselves or that's just how their life became. And there was an example of a person, a, a woman who became a widow and ended up, uh, was living in an apartment by herself and then ended up, I think, in a nursing home and it was, it stopped talking with people. And the social worker, I think, at the nursing home somehow succeeded in getting out of her the fact that she loved music. And he went out of his way to research her, her situation, I think found maybe the director of the neighborhood orchestra. The neighborhood orchestra, yeah. It, it was an interesting story and uh, of a person who was... Uh, not not joining it at all in any of the activities and deteriorating uh, when uh, they found out that she played an instrument in an orchestra in the past and so they brought in some classical music and she started to uh, wake up you know, wake up and essentially and start to interact with her caregivers yeah. and uh, it turned out she started to be able to feed herself and and uh, they had music uh, and the caregivers uh, all wanted to <laughs> go to that room because there was always yeah, great music yeah. going on uh, once she got going. Yeah, so that's yes. one of the stories. But one of the uh, objects of having stories there uh, is, is to use it, these as an examples of why these uh, I ideas are important and, and how to be more intentional uh, so that uh, you don't get into a situation where, where uh, you're suffering and uh, n people don't know what to do for you. Oh, yeah. And I am a master connector, so if you don't know how to reach people who can help you as far as the estate planners, etc., you can contact me. You can possibly ask Dr. Hansen here, but the people in his building who helped with the, a lot of the information in here. I'm sure they'd love to talk with you. Uh, what I'd love to know is with all this fame that you've gotten for winning this award, that's a mm. huge <laughs> deal. <laughs> <laughs> what does it feel like to have a bodyguard? <laughs> well, I, I think I'm my, my own bodyguard because <laughs> uh, so far, so far I have uh, not been uh, uh, harassed. But I have had times in the past when I was harassed, and I did uh, do security issues because I was uh, very involved with uh, tobacco control oh, yeah. and non-smoking and uh, public policy related to that and. I had my phones tapped and uh, calls in the middle of the night with somebody breathing and uh, notes on my windshield that we know where you are and calls in my office. 
uh, when it, when is he going to be there and when can I? Right. Uh, so it, it was um, you know a kind of a harassment period. So I, I didn't hire a bodyguard, but I made uh, security things where I had a phone tracking uh, on mm -hmm. on uh, home phones and cell phones and office phones. And as soon as the phone tracking came on, came on, then the harassment stopped. Wow. So, but I don't have a bodyguard now. <laughs> oh. Now also, what did it feel like, what, did you ever get writer's block? Well, I, I call it uh, uh, inertia uh, <laughs> uh, or procrastination. Uh, and I uh, suffer from procrastination. Ah. Uh, and so uh, I work at that uh, regularly. Uh, but once uh, I get uh, started writing, you, you kind of get lost. And uh, so just getting started and getting your, uh, you used to say getting your pencil sharpened, <laughs> but now, now it's uh, getting your computer uh, tuned up okay. and, and uh, getting into the right files and then st starting a new chapter um, takes some time. But uh, once I get going, I uh, tend to keep right on going and, and finish things pretty well. What, what gets you out of that inertia? Uh, sometimes exercise, mm. uh, getting out and go down. We have a exercise room here in the pool. So I get down there and work, do a workout, and uh, that's a good way to start the day. Uh, I like to go down there, and I, I can ride a bicycle, stationary bicycle, while I'm reading the paper. And so I've got the paper done, I've got my exercise done, and then I can go to work. Now, if you could pick one group to present your book to, like for, I guess, a book signing, who would you pick? Uh, I would pick ARP. Uh, the, the Association of Re Retired Persons, American Association of Retired Persons. Now, is that a uh, a group or it's a, it's a publication basically? But that would have a wide uh, uh, audience yeah. and and a, a audience of uh, older people who uh, would more resonate to the uh, subjects that we're dealing with. Yeah, that makes sense. Also. Well, could you tell me one quirky thing you do in your free time? I watch birds. I, right. I, I like to watch birds. So, uh, you know, that's uh, uh, quirky. I don't think that's quirky. <laughs> no. It's, a, it's, it's uh, a um, diversion and, and a great pastime. And, and it's changing all year round because of the migrations and so forth. So that's one thing I... I find rewarding. Yeah, I know nothing about birds. I just know I like looking at them. And what, what about the birds? Well, they're uh, fascinating they, they, because many of them are, are derivatives of the dinosaur. So you think about it. You know, millions of years ago, uh, there were flying, well, larger animals are flying. And these are the, what's, what's left of the uh, dinosaurs. So you think about that, and uh, you say, hmm, you know, these are, these are little dinosaurs. Some of them are pretty small. But, uh, and it, and the, the variety is such that, you know, there's thousands and thousands of, well, I think about 8,000 varieties in the, in the world. But, uh, you know, in, in Minnesota, where we live, uh, we've got hundreds of uh, varieties, and, and uh, there's be different populations at different times of the year depending on the weather and the, and the access to uh, bird food, so to speak. Wow. And finish the sentence. I wish more people knew this about me. I wish more people knew this about me. What is this for you? Well, I, uh, that I was a bird watcher was uh, what I thought I was going to answer there. Uh, <laughs> but what, what else uh, do you know about me? Uh, I'm a, a living example of senior falls, mm. uh, and I have fallen and broken a femur in the mid shaft right after I had a uh, total hip replacement. So I'm elderly. Uh, I fit the, uh, the uh, target audience for the book, and I've also had experience uh, in falling and breaking a, a leg and trying to recover uh, and having surgery before a fracture.
Yeah, and it seems like the tip that I got from well, one of your closest friends, my dad, is that well, I didn't realize that the elderly often don't pick up their feet enough when they walk. Is that sound? I I don't know. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> well, some, some of them, I guess. <laughs> I, I try to pick up my feet, but I guess I didn't. <laughs> yeah, and it's... It's uh, when you have carpeting in your home to, if you can somehow stick it onto the floor, maybe Velcro, I don't know how you do it. Don't have any uh, extra rugs, no throw rugs, so, period. Get rid of all the throw rugs. And so you have either a carpeting, full carpeting in a room or a, uh, a plain floor. Uh, but no, no throw rugs, no extra rugs that have little edges to them, or you can slip a, a slide on them, and you know, it's wood floor below a, a, a throw rug is a, is a, a no no for old people. Well, that makes sense. Maybe well, even for young people. Yeah, like for me, I trip on lint. <laughs> so now. I guess this is the last one, and then at the uh, at the last frame we have, I will be thanking my newest subscribers. So, to get to know some of the special people who are in the two hundred plus crowd, stay tuned. Last question, Jerome, please. What is the hard? Well, actually, a question and a half. What is the hardest part of aging for you? Well, I think uh, losing sight. I have macular degeneration, and I've had. 74 shots in the left eye and uh, only 23 in the right eye. Oh so uh, losing sight uh, is the hardest thing for me. Uh, I can read with one eye, so, and I can write with one, one or two fingers on a, a computer, so um, I'm still going. Wow. How about the easiest aspect of it? Well, I think the, I don't know if it's easy, but, but just having the uh, past experience, uh, re, re, considering those past experience, you know, looking back, uh, you know, is this wisdom or just a um, vicarious pleasure of thinking about uh, what you did uh, during life uh, as a worker, uh, as a athlete, as a student, uh, as a lover. I mean, uh, just thinking about the experiences you've had is uh, uh, very rewarding and, uh, and the reflecting on that. Uh, it, does that lead to some wisdom? Maybe, uh, but I would just call it a, you know, living uh, vicariously in your past. <laughs> and then uh, looking forward to the future. I mean, I think, uh, I look forward to every day, uh, and I look forward to the next 14 years. I'll be 100 then, and anything beyond that is gravy. And your mom lived till she was, what, 100? Well, she was. Uh, she didn't die as young as my dad did. My dad died at 93, but she died at 99 in two months. Thank you right now for tuning in, and make sure to get your copy. This is A Senior's Guide for Living Well and Dying Well, Conversations That Matter, and thank you so much, Dr. Hansen, for your time and for your talent. Check in the details section for where to get it. Any other closing comments? Uh, just, just that uh, it, this is uh, an opportunity for anybody that's listening to this to live more intentionally and to be more intentional about the trajectory of your life. Yeah, it's the one life you've got to live, so make it count. Thank you. And if you want to be on here for an interview, contact me. I love helping entrepreneurs. Again, many, many thanks, Dr. Stuart Hanser, for letting me interview you for that incredible book. And now I want to thank my newest subscribers. I finally got to the over 200 mark of subscribers, aiming for 500. So many thanks to Greg Bushman of Brick30 Technology as well as Ben McGrail, who's got his own YouTube channel, Jammin, like Benjamin, Jammin1317. So make sure to check out his channel, Jammin1317. And then also Jeremiah Bates of Revealed Horizons Yoga and Wellness. You can find them all on LinkedIn. Thanks so much, you guys. This is so cool. I'm so excited. Make sure to pass this on pass this episode on to somebody who has 
elderly friends, family that they worry about, okay? Tune in next time. Thanks for subscribing. We'll see you soon.